Chapter 7 Installation and Establishment Establishing trees successfully begins with high-quality nursery stock and using proper planting techniques. The transplanting process can be disruptive, and improper methods can cause stress and long-term health issues. It's crucial for arborists to stay updated on the best management practices to ensure the health and stability of newly planted trees. Landscape trees are available for purchase in a few different stock types. You have your bare root, containerized, container-grown, and bald and burlapped or B&B. Each one of these has its own advantages and disadvantages, factors like cost, site requirements, species, and regional production methods often determine which stock type is used. Bare root trees are generally smaller, easier to transport, and less expensive than other types. They arrive with many of their larger roots intact, but fine roots are often lost during harvesting. It's crucial to keep the roots moist during handling and planting. Bare root trees should be planted during the dormant season before buds begin to grow. When planting, avoid digging the hole too deep. Instead, spread the roots and prevent kinking. And certain species of bare root trees may require a process known as sweating to break dormancy. Sweating is done by wrapping the roots in a moisture-holding material like burlap and covering the tree with plastic to maintain high humidity. The tree is kept in a warm area until the buds begin to swell. Planting should occur as soon as the swelling starts, as planting after bud break can be detrimental to the tree survival. All right, so now we have containerized and container-grown trees. Many trees are sold in containers. Container-grown trees have intact root systems and if properly maintained can be planted at any time of year when the ground isn't frozen. However, it's important to check for circling roots, which can lead to girdling. If you find circling roots, they should be corrected before planting. And finally, we have bald and burlapped or B&B trees. They are field-grown, dug with a portion of their root system intact, and wrapped in burlap. Handling B&B trees requires care to keep the root ball moist and to avoid damage. Synthetic burlap should be removed to allow for proper root growth. Additionally, larger trees often come in wire baskets, which should be partially removed to prevent future root girdling. Proper planting technique is critical for tree health. A saucer-shaped planting hole two to three times the width of the root ball promotes vigorous root growth. Avoid planting too deeply as this can cause stress and suffocate the roots. The trunk flare should be at or slightly above soil level. When backfilling, use the same soil that was removed and avoid adding fill to the bottom of the hole as this can cause the tree to settle too deeply. And watering is essential for a new root development. Containerized trees, in particular, require careful attention as their growing medium dries out faster than the soil. On slope sites, use a, a berm to retain water over the root zone. For trees planted in less monitored locations, consider using portable water devices. But remember, these require regular checking to avoid neglecting the tree. Transplanting trees involves additional steps such as digging and preparing the tree for movement. The best time to transplant is during the tree's dormant season, usually in early spring or autumn. Even in the growing season with extra care, some trees can be successfully transplanted. Remember, planning and proper techniques are key to successful transplanting. Root pruning is a technique used to improve transplant success by encouraging root growth within the final root ball. This process involves severing roots before the moving the tree to stimulate new root development. When it's time to move the tree, secure the branches to prevent damage during transport. The size of the root ball is typically determined by the tree's caliper, with adjustments made based on species and soil conditions. Now let's talk about preparing the root ball. Start by making the first cuts around the perimeter of the root ball using a sharp spade or shovel. This step is crucial to ensure clean cuts and prevent root damage. If you're using machinery like a backhoe or trencher, initially dig the ball slightly larger than the final size to avoid tearing roots. The final shaping and cut should always be done by hand. As you encounter larger roots, cut them cleanly with loppers or a saw. Some experts recommend sterilizing tools with alcohol or bleach to minimize the risk of disease transmission. 
For larger trees, consider additional support like drum lacing with manila rope or even boxing the tree on site before moving it. Once the root ball is secured, undercut the tree. Use a crane or another mechanical device to lift the tree, making sure to place chains or slings around the root ball, not the trunk. Trunk lifting can cause serious damage to both the trunk and the root ball. And when you're transporting, protect the tree by patting the trunk and loosely wrapping the crown with burlap to prevent drying and wind damage. Special permits might be required for transporting large trees on public roads, so plan ahead. Tree spades are large angled blades that form a root ball by cutting through the roots. Ensure that the tree spade is centered around the tree for a uniform root ball. Avoid using tree spades for trees that are larger than the spade's limitations. After digging, break up any glazed surfaces in the planting hole to encourage root growth. Palms are generally easier to transplant, limited only by the size of the equipment that you have. They rely on stored water in their trunks, which makes it, uh, younger palms harder to transplant than mature ones. Keep the root ball moist and consider wrapping it in burlap if replanting is delayed. For species like sable palms, you could actually remove all the fronds before transplanting and it will increase the survival rate. The hole that you dig for palms should be wider than the root ball, but not too deep. Using backfill from the hole helps maintain consistency in the soil structure. Avoid planting palms at different depths to create uniform tops as this stresses the plants. Large palms may require a crane for planting and slender stems may need bracing. Transplanting often leads to significant root loss causing transplant shock. Proper watering is key to recovery. Monitor soil moisture by checking the root ball and surrounding soil. Water deeply and slowly to moisten soil up to one foot deep. Avoid overwatering, which can displace oxygen in the soil and harm the tree. And mulching helps retain moisture, reduce competition, and improve soil structure. Organic mulches like shredded bark or hardwood chips are preferred for their nutrient benefits. Apply two to four inches of mulch around the tree, extending it out at least six feet in diameter. Avoid piling it against the trunk, though because that can cause bacterial or fungal infections. Not all newly planted trees require staking. However, if stabilization is necessary, use flexible, broad materials to avoid girdling the trunk. Guy wires can be used for larger trees, but they should be attached low on the trunk to allow for natural movement and taper development. Make sure you regularly check through and remove the stabilization materials after one growing season. Tree wraps once commonly used are now known to cause more harm than good by trapping moisture and fostering fungal growth. If wraps are necessary, choose light-colored, breathable materials. Plastic or metal mesh guards can protect the trunk from animal damage and mechanical injury. Remember to remove or replace them as the tree grows. Limit pruning after planting to corrective pruning only. Research shows that trees establish faster when less pruning is done initially. Focus on removing broken and damaged branches and training young trees for good structure to reduce their need for major pruning later. Detailed planting specifications are crucial when working with contractors or bidding for projects. These should include clear definitions, timelines, warranties, and references to local and national standards. Using standardized terminology ensures quality and effective communication throughout the process. All right, that's the end of chapter seven. Thanks again for watching. Hit the subscribe button and wait for chapter eight, pruning.